So this is the first of two parts videos about blending problems. In this video, I'm going to show you the key to formulate a blending problem. And then we have two parts of videos here because you will see in the example that we have quite a lot of constraints to formulate. But you will notice that in this example and then in quite a lot of examples, even though we have a lot of constraints to formulate, usually for the same type of constraint, once you know how to formulate for one item, let's say, you can easily do a very similar thing to formulate the same constraint, the same type of constraint for the other items. So let's start. In the real world situations, these are some examples of typical blending problems. In particular, what we're going to see next is we are going to blend various types of oil to produce different types of gasoline. So let's take a look at the example. In this example, Sanco Oil manufactures three types of gasoline, gas one, gas two, and gas three. So first you notice that the final products are these three types of gasoline. And then you go on to the next sentence and you see that uh, each type is produced by blending three types of crude oil. So it means that these three types of crude oils, these are the raw materials. So you need crude oil as the raw materials and then you blend them together and then you get the final product, which are the gasoline, gas one, gas two, and gas three. And then you keep going and then you see that in table 12, you are given the data that says, these are the sales price of your final product. And then to do the manufacturing process, you need to purchase this raw material. Here, uh, it is the crude oil. And each type of crude oil has their own purchase price per barrel. Now your final product, guess one, guess two, and guess three, they have some requirements. So if you keep reading, you uh, see a sentence saying that guess one must something, at least 10 and at most 1%. So here, when you're reading a problem, you notice that when you see the word must, at least, at most, you know that these sentences, they're talking about the constraints. Okay, so we have the constraints for guess one, we have the constraints for guess two, we have the constraints for guess three. Again, how do I know these are the constraints? Well, you can see you have the word must, and then you have at least, and you have at most. Okay, so those are the constraints for your final product, the gasoline. And then because you manufacture those gases from the crude oil, we need to know what is the um, octane rating for each of the crude oil, and then what is the sulfur content for each of the crude oil. Those are given in table 13. And then when you see the word something like can produce up to, you know again that this is about the constraint. Up to something at most, at least, those are always about the constraint. In the third paragraph, you see again that it says require the following amounts. So it's about a requirement. So again, this must be about constraint. Here, the constraint says that for each day, you need to produce a certain number of barrels of guess one, guess two, and guess three. You keep reading and you see the sentence saying that Sanko also has the option. Now, this is quite different. Has the option means that it's not a requirement, it's not a constraint. Has the option means that you can decide to do that or not to do that. So here, this is a clue about a decision variable because you have the option to do that or not do that, okay? So this is about um, the decision variable. 
And finally, here you can see the objective of this problem is to maximize the daily profits. Profits are defined as revenues minus costs. Now I will give you a pause in the video to give you a chance to really read this long problem very carefully. And I'll continue the discussion after the pause. Let's start by talking about how can we define the mixture of crude one, crude two, and crude three oils to create the final products, gas one, gas two, and gas three. Okay, this is really the key of the blending problem. So we have three types of crude oils, and just for the sake of illustration, let's say I only have a little of crude one oil, I have a lot of crude two oil, and I've quite a lot of crude tree oil. And then suppose I create gas one using this portion of mixture. So quite balanced between crude one and crude two, but I only put just a little bit of crude tree. So this mixture, I call it gas one. And then another mixture, I create a lot more of a mixture that I called as gas 2. You can see that the proportion or the mixture of gas 2 is quite different with gas 1. I have a lot more portion of the yellow one in gas 2, so I put a lot more crude 2 oil into gas 2, and then I also put a lot more crude 3 oil to create gas 2. And then the total number of gas 2 is also bigger than gas 1. For gas 3, however, I decided to create just a little bit of gas 3. And it consists of a little bit of crude 1, little bit of crude 2, and a little bit of crude 3. Again, the size and the mixture here are just the illustration for this um, slide. Now, let's talk about gas 1. What can you tell about gas one? Well, you can say gas one consists of some amount of crude one, some amount of crude two, and little bit amount of crude three. If I put uh, the description for each arrow, it will be like this. The first arrow here means the amount or barrels to be exact the amount of barrels of crude one oil to create gas one. The second arrow here means the amount of crude two to create gas one, right? Because the arrow goes from crude two to gas one. And then the last arrow here is the amount of crude three to produce gas one. Now, if you like to create a symbol or a variable for each of this arrow, you can put, for example, here x11 means the amount of crude one to create gas one. So you can guess that for the second arrow, the indices will be 2, 1, so x21, because from crude two to gas one. Right, and finally, for the last arrow, you can see if you want to create a variable for that, it will be x31 from crude tree oil to gas one. Okay, so to generalize the name of the variable, you can say xij means the barrels of crude oil i to produce gas j. You may ask if this is a must to name the variable xij. Um, it's not really, but um, this, the, this name of the variable is intuitive, right? From crude oil i to guess j, and then you create the name xij. So you know it's going from i to j. And then for the other mixture, you also have the name. For example, if you're going to say the crude tree oil to create gas tree here, 
the name is X33. We'll see more about this later. You may also wonder why we need to bother with XIJ. Can't we just say the gases are G1, G2, G3 and the crude oils are C1, C2, C3? Well, that definition is not enough because if you just say crude one is C1 and then gas one is G1, you cannot really define this arrow, right? How can you say how much of C1 that you put into G1? So that is quite difficult to say if you only have C1 and G1. So to make everything very clear and specific, we need XIJ. So you really can tell how many barrels of crude I that goes into gas J. So you really capture the blending or the mixture or the proportion that you put into each of the gasoline. This is the key of the blending problem. So you really need to capture this idea. From the previous discussion, we've defined XIJ. These XIJ variables are actually decision variables because you need to decide how many barrels of crude oil will be used to produce gas J. This decision will affect your profits. So that's why these are the decision variables. And then if we go back to the problem, we also have another decision variables actually. As I've said earlier, when you see um, in the problem where it says Sanko has the option of advertising, you know that this is also a decision variable because you need to decide whether you want to do the advertisement or not. And then another thing to um, notice here is that here you see that advertising a particular type of gas, which means that you need to decide the advertisement for each type of gas. So you need to decide how much you want to put, how, how much money or how many dollars you want to spend for gas one, gas two, and gas three. So let's say we name it the variable AI, the dollars we spend daily on advertising gas I. Again, this index I appears because from the problem you see that the option to put some advertisement is really um, specific for each type of the gas that you have. Okay, so you cannot just say the variable is just A for advertisement. You cannot do that. You need to specify A1, which means you spent uh, for advertising gas one, A2 for advertising gas two, A3 for advertising gas three. So those are the decision variables. Before going on to the objective function, let's see how we can relate our decision variables x, i, j to the total number of guess 1, guess 2, guess 3 and also the total number of crude oil 1, 2, 3 that we have. So because we know that x11, x21 and x31 are the amounts of crude oils that goes into guess 1, we can say that the total number of guess 1 that we have equals x11 plus x21 plus x31, right? And then for guess 2, we have x12 plus x22 plus x32. And then for guess 3, how many barrels of crude oil 1, how many barrels of crude oil 2, how many crude oil 3 that we put into guess 3, that is the amount of guess 3 that we have. Similarly, you can also say the amount of crude one that you have equals x11, x12, and x13, right? Because these are the crude oil one that you use to produce the gases. So you can take the sum of this three to say that that is the number of the amount of crude oil that you have. Similarly, you have the number of crude oil 2 equals that number, x21, x22 plus x23. And then for crude oil 3, 
you take the sum of all the x's that starts with 3. So x3 1 plus x3 2 plus x3 3. Now that we know the relation between the decision variables and the amount of gasoline and crude oils that we have, we are ready to formulate the objective function. The objective of this problem is to maximize the daily profit. So we need to collect all the information related to money and dollars. So first of all, we have the sales price for gasoline that we have. And then we also have the purchase price of the crude oil, which we have defined in the previous slide. And then you also have the cost of transforming one barrel of oil into one barrel of gasoline. And finally, the information that is related to money is about the uh, decision to put an advertisement. For each dollar that we spend in the advertisement, obviously it will um, affect our profit. So from table 12, you have the sales price for each barrel of the gasoline. So here, this is the amount of gasoline that we have. Gasoline one, X11 plus X21 plus X31 barrels. We can sell this at $70 per barrel. We can sell gas two at the price of $60 per barrel, and then gas three at the price of $50 per barrel. And then these are the purchase price for the crude oils. This is the amount of crude oil that we need or we have, and then we can buy them at the price of $45. For crude two, we can buy them at the rate of $35, and for crude three, $25. Okay, so from the right-hand side of the previous slide, we have the daily revenue from selling the gas, gas one, gas two, and gas three. From the left-hand side of the previous slide, we get the daily cost of purchasing the crude oil. We also have the cost of transforming crude oil to gasoline. So whatever type of crude oil that you transform into whatever type of gasoline, you need to pay $4 for each barrel. We also have the advertising cost for each type of the gasoline. Summing all these components together creates the complete objective function that we would like to maximize. So we have formulated the decision variables and the objective function for this problem. In the second part of the video, we are going to formulate all the constraints and the sign restrictions to complete the formulation of this problem. So see you on the second part of the video. Thank you.